Hi there, how are you doing? Probably not so good. That's why you are here. Whenever we listen to these words, stability of system, Routh with stability criterion, Routh array, they create too much confusion in our mind. So let's clear all of your doubts. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Thakar Ki Parshala, and you are watching third part of this video series, Routh with the stability criterion. And this part is about how to find the stability of system via Routh array method. In this video, I will talk about how to form Routh array from given equation and how to solve that in order to find out the stability. So let's Let's get started. First of all, to find out the stability of system via this method, you will need a characteristic equation of the system. It depends on the mood of examiner that they direct give you the characteristic equation or they can give you transfer function. If they give transfer function, then first of all, you will need to figure out characteristic equation from that. This is the standard form of the transfer function, denominator of transfer function called as the characteristic equation. Looks pretty simple, right? Don't worry, rest of the method is also very simple. I will discuss here one simple example along with the theory so you can get better understanding about this topic. We are taking this example s cube plus 6s square plus 12s plus 8 is equal to 0. Now first of all we will compare given equation with the standard form of the characteristic equation which we have derived earlier. To find out the coefficient which are in multiplication with different power of s, we will find the value of a0, a1, a2 etc. By comparing this equation with the standard we will get a0 is equal to 1, a1 is equal to 6, a2 is equal to 12 and a3 is equal to 8. After finding out value of a0, a1, a2 and so on we will move to next step which is to write them into array form. To solve the equation. There is one simple trick, just draw two lines like this, then start with the highest order of s. In theory, we are taking it n and for this example, it is 3 because here in example, it is the highest order of s. Now decrease it by 1, you will get s raised to n minus 1, here s square and so on. We will write them as we proceed. Now we will see how to fill this array with quantities. In the first row, we will write all the even coefficient which are a0, a2, a4 etc. Pay attention here. I am saying even that means that this a0 and a2 thing it doesn't mean that the derived values. So please don't mess up with this in examination. Value of first row will be like this. If we move to our example here value of a0 is equal to 1 and value of a2 is equal to 12. We do not have any value for a4. So we are limiting our array here. Now next step is to write all the odd coefficient in the second row which are a1, a3, a5 and so on. Here in the example, we have value for a1 is equal to 6 and a3 is equal to 8. Now, we do not have any further value. So, we are limiting this array here. Congratulations, you have just formulated array and this is the completion of second step. Up to here, what we have written was given in the equation. Now, we have to find our way ourselves. I will not say this is difficult or simple task, but I will say this is somewhat tricky. So, keep your eyes and mind here. The first step is obviously to decrease one power of s and write that here. After doing this, we need to write the first quantity of third row. We will call it b1. So to write value of b1, start here from a1. So value of b1 will be multiplication of a1 and a2 minus multiplication of a0 and a3 whole divided by a0. Here further you can remember this shape to simplify the things. Start from here, then go to here. This line represent minus and again multiplication of this both quantities and this line is division and whole thing divided by the first quantity. If we look in our example, we will decrease the power of s by 1 and write s raised to 1 which is ultimately s. For your understanding, I am writing this 1. It is not necessary to write it in examination. Here the value of b1 will be like 12 into 6 minus 1 into 8 divided by 6. If you do the calculation, you will get the answer 10.67. Now to get the value of b2, we will do the same thing, start from a1 and multiplication of a1 with a4 minus multiplication of a0 and a5. If we look into the example, then here we don't have any quantities, so we are taking 0. For b3, we will do the same thing and just move to one quantity, so value of b3 will be multiplication of a1 and a6 minus multiplication of a0 and a7 divided by a1. Here you need to pay attention that we are fixing these two quantities and varying another two. Now look here, we will get one less quantity than the previous row. It will happen all the time. If we write this for next row, then we will get only two quantities. In order to get the next row, we will decrease the power of s by 1. Now to write the value of c1, we will do the same thing. Whole process start from b1. So value of c1 will be like multiplication of b1 and a3 minus multiplication of a1 and b2 divided by b1. 
For this example, the value of C1 will be multiplication of 10.67 and 8 minus multiplication of 0 and 6, which is obviously 0. And if we divide this whole thing with 10.67, we will get value 8. So for this example, we have done it. We got here S raised to 0 or we can say 1. But here we can proceed further. So we can get value of C2. The value of C2 will be multiplication of B1 and A5 minus multiplication of A1 and, A and B3 divided by B1. If we decrease order of S by 1, we can get the value of D1 also. So the value of D1 will be like multiplication of C1 and B2 minus multiplication of C2 and B1 whole divided by C1. So we are limiting our array up to here. If you have more values, you can proceed further as I have shown earlier. We have done all this exercise in order to find out the ultimate stability of system. So just one step is remaining. To find out whether the system is stable or not, just remember one rule. If quantity is in the first column, do not change the sign, then given system is stable. And if the quantity is obtained in the first column, change the sign, then the system is unstable. Here change of sign means that sign should be consistent. Like if we are getting the negative signs, then all should be negative. And if we are getting positive signs, then all should be positive. Here we do not see change of signs. We have got all the value positive. So system is stable. So that's it for now. This was the third part of this video series. In upcoming part, I will discuss about special cases of this technique. So hit that subscribe button along with that bell icon. So you don't miss that. Like it if you have liked it. Share it if you feel that this content is worth sharing. And if I have missed something or made any mistake or you have still any doubt, then comment it down below. We will meet in my next video.